Hello everyone, this is Dr. Paitos Dubey and you are watching Concept Best Dentistry. Today we are going to discuss dentin bonding or dentin bonding agents. In the previous lectures we have discussed already that how enamel has to be bonded and what are the requirements for it. But in this case we are discussing dentin bonding and we will discuss later on that how dentin bonding differs from that of bonding to enamel. First, <coughs> let me show you the arbitrary structure, a rough idea about how a dentin bonding agent is and how it works. So. This is how it can grossly be described as M or X, where the M is the double bond of the methacrylate polymer, which again polymerizes with the composite molecule here. And this end, X, is the hydrophilic end, which again will bond to the tooth structure. There you go. Okay. And the R is the chain. Obviously, when you are bonding a structure, the this structure is in actually in angstrom and nanometers. So between the tooth and the composite, there must be some space, and that space must be covered by the chain. So this is the chain or the spacer we can say, which is a which makes this molecule overall a large molecule. So here we are going to the micro level of a tooth preparation done. Suppose in this case, the tooth preparation is like this, and these are the margins or the line line angles. The, this one being the cable surface margin. So <coughs> we are going to etch this surface. So let me first tell you how many generations of dentin bonding agents are there. It is from first till seven, seven generation first. So I'll tell you later on how to keep that in your memory from on the all those composition from all the way to from first generation till the seventh generation. We'll discuss on it later. So here we are taking this picture into a larger format. So this was the surface. Here I am making that organic structure of the dentin. Obviously we are to preparing the tooth into the dentin. One to point eight to one or two mm into dentin the requirement is when we are preparing a tooth it should the tooth preparation should be done on a dentin surface not on the enamel. So here what we are getting is dentin. If you can Here the there will be somewhere enamel. Here is the dentin. We are working the dentin. This is the these are the collagen fibers. And at micro level this won't be so much smooth, that would be rough. So it again the dentin contains obviously that inorganic hydroxy appetite crystals that are uh, unorganized or rather disorganized as compared to that of an enamel. So here's the inorganic matrix, the collagen fibrils, and of course water would be there. There is water. So what we are doing, again we are coming to the basic steps of dentin bonding. The basic step of dentin bonding being, first is dentin bonding steps. Conditioning. Conditioning. In condition, I'll discuss what are the uh, chemicals we use for conditioning. Let's for uh, or is let's just note down what are the steps. Okay, this is the conditioning first step. Then comes priming. Another step. And after it, what we do is final bonding or bonding. So just to bond, we have to make sure we are going through all these steps. This doesn't mean literally that you'll have to go into each step one by one. You can do it all at a time. Means That means you can do conditioning, priming, and bonding all in this at the same time. And that's what we see in case of third generation renting bonding agents, where you'll see sorry, that was a mistake. Not in third, that would be sixth. Six generation dentin bonding agents. We will find a one bottle solution where we are getting conditioner, primer, and a bonding agent in the same bottle, and that is six generation dentin bonding agent. Even we will see in case of first and second generation dentin bonding agent that we don't have separate such conditioners, primers, or bonding agents separately. We'll we have it in same bottle, but uh, that conditioning and priming are not that precise. I mean, you don't give uh, separately those solutions. You won't find conditioner and primer as such. But since it is also used in a single bottle, so one bottle. So we are getting one bottle solutions in first generation. Then second generation, one bottle again, and in sixth generation we'll again get one bottle. We'll discuss later on in, on, in more detail. Just for our ease, we are just defining here conditioning, priming, and bonding. So what we are doing, we'll first apply the conditioner. Suppose it's not a sixth generation dentin bonding agent. We are doing it stepwise. 
So what we are doing is first we are condi conditioning. So here we put the conditioner solution. What conditioner does is that it simply removes all that smear layer. This zigzag I'm, I'm making it's, it's the smear layer, and this smear layer uh, will be removed by the conditioner. And after it, once the uh, conditioner has removed the smear layer in some kind of conditions like acids in uh, particular, they do what is they even demineralize the dentin. So after demineralization, what we get this this dot dot what I have shown is inorganic material or uh, constituent of the dentin that is calcium hydroxyapatite crystal that we will lose. Okay. So what remains is that all these collagen fibrils and water and other organic uh, proteins, osteogenin, osteocancin and whatnot. So what we are left with the water and this uh, collagen. Collagen again can be denatured either by conditioning and some of the re remaining will be free and in a good state, not denatured. So acid can, uh, which are more close in contact, those collagen which are more closely in relation to uh, those acid or conditioners, they get denatured and those un un under the surface of it are rather healthy and free freely float into the liquid or the fluid of the retinal fluid, retinal fibrils. Sorry. So once we have conditioned, the collagen fibrils are entangled and are floating in a fluid without any inorganic matrix. So uh, they are readily available for any sort of molecule which can bind to them and are hydrophilic as well because you know organic things uh, organic uh, these collagens are hydrophilic in nature and what composites are they are hydrophobic and here dentin it is hydrophilic that is water loving these are water hitting they do not like water so so in the previous picture if we have to do bonding between a hydrophilic and a hyd hydrophobic and a hydrophilic substance we will have to bring another compound which has both the hydrophobic part I mean a hydrophobic end a rather neutral or it is generally hydrophobic but we can uh, we are not going into this we just uh, know for now that this is the hydrophobic end this is hydrophilic end that is water loving this is the water hitting part so and uh, this is and there is composite and there this is truth so in but so to bring them together or bring them close we'll have to get one end that is hydrophilic hydrophobic both are similar in nature they will attach to each other and the tooth and the axe uh, that is the hydrophilic end will attract each other so on a, going into a chemical detail a little bit, uh, we can say that obviously the tooth is containing organic part and the inorganic part, the or inorganic part being calcium hydroxyapatite. So it has a cation that is with two valency with uh, on the calcium. So we can either choose to bind our mm, this uh, bonding agent to the calcium or it can bind also to other organic portion that is the collagen and again collagen as we know will have several uh, groups like uh, NH group or hydroxyl group or COnH or even the acid group like this we are saying these are the groups which uh, collagen that is the organic component of a tooth can have so to bind to this we'll have to make the so in this case if we are intentionally binding to these groups that is the organic part the X should be similarly uh, such that it binds to them and if we are focusing focusing on calcium particularly that is the inorganic part so in, in this case X what we, is there instead of X what is X in this case of cal calcium where we are going to bind it X is alcohols it can be alcohol it can be amide or it can be phosphate or it also can be dicarboxylates so coming to the this picture again here there is fluid the collagen fibers like this so this again coming there is x x binds to this collagen or even if there is any uh, inorganic substance that in case of chelates there is let me spell again conditioner as we have already discussed here the first step can be either acid as we already know the most common acid we use is 37% orthophosphoric acid and it can also be chelating agents particularly calcium chelating agents so what in this case in the second case we do not demineralize because it isn't acid, so it doesn't do the demineralization thing. So uh, after conditioning with a chelating agent, we will see even the inorganic, even the inorganic component of the dentin and the organic as well, when we are going to do dentin bonding. But after we have uh, conditioned a tooth or the dentin in particular, after using an acid, we will only find or mostly find the organic structure because the inorganic structure, that is the calcium hydroxyapatite has already cleared out. So this is the difference uh, into conditioning by acid or a chelating agent. What are the acids that we generally use for conditioning? Is the most importantly 37% orthophosphoric acid, given for 15 seconds. And there is again one more question that comes: uh, What if uh, uh, after etching or 
after this uh, conditioning, uh, if saliva uh, contaminates the surface where we are bonding, then in that case we do uh, conditioning for 10 seconds more. Okay, that's it. Chelating agent. Uh, what, what are the other acids we can use for uh, this conditioning? Is maleic acid, citric acid, etc. And what are the ch what is the main chelating agent that we use for conditioning? Is DT. We also use it in case of storing or preserving blood, not preserving actually, for uh, transporting it to uh, a lab or something so that it does not coagulate. It is an, uh, it can be used intravascularly, but it is used in vials. So this is EDTA, this is a chelate that chelates the calcium, the equipment material that is that EDTA. One more question uh, most often asked that uh, uh, why there is pain after we uh, dry or blow up the area of uh, this uh, condition to or or uh, why it is not advisable to uh, dry up this area after conditioning or before bonding why is this so so just because i told you that there is fluid and the fluid makes this collagen fibrils to float and these floating uh, uh, collagen are more prone to catch up with this x of the mrx that is the alcohol or acetone or whatever group it is of the bonding agent so it is readily readily available to bind with these collagens and if it is dried up what in what if it dried up there is no obvious fluid and these are collected and these are in this fashion, so they are not like this, so that it can be readily avail available to this. So it is, it is less penetrable by this X group. So this is the reason why it is advised not to completely dry up the surface we have, which we have condi conditioned before bonding. What we can do al alternatively in this, in that case, is we can simply use a high volume evacuator so that it sucks up the all uh, fluid that is up after we, okay, after we have conditioned this surface we will again use water to clean clean this up because conditioner we don't want it to stay there okay so conditioner we will remove away wash away or rinse with water and there will still be some water left so we don't want excess water in this because even excess of water will impede this binding so neither excess of water nor do we want it to com be completely dried up so what we do we do not blow away with high pressure uh, blower or something but instead we use high volume ex evacuator or suction tips to suck up the extra fluid and it won't uh, disorganize or won't hinder this water that is uh, imaged up with the collagen so, and after uh, high volume evacuator, we use cotton rolls, uh, sterile obviously, sterile cotton rolls, or we can use uh, uh, blotting papers to dry up the remaining part of water. And that does not totally desiccate the dentin. So the collagen in this fashion is still remaining to readily bond with this X. Now I'll give you a quick tip on how to memorize or remember easily. Uh, you can call it a mnemonic, but uh, it's a quick tip actually, how to keep it in your mind for a long time that uh, what all those uh, generations of dentin bonding agents comprise or contain. So here's the first generation dentin bonding agent. Then there's second generation, then there's third generation, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh generation. What in case of first generation we use is G P A di methacrylate. This is in case of first generation dentin bonding agent that is a more of a prototype that we don't use nowadays. So what GPA is in full, it is glycerol or glycerophosphoric acid dimethacrylate. So this you'll have to remember anyway. But uh, if you uh, remember in short GPA, you can easily uh, recall that oh god, it was it must be glycerophosphoric acid. So this is it. You don't have to remember anything else. And uh, dimethacrylate, we know every dentin bo bonding agent. It's the unit of uh, every polymer uh, we use in dentistry. Every resin. Okay. So methacrylate is obviously there. In second generation, it uh, uses chlorosubstituted phosphate esters of all those various monomers used in dentistry. Various monomers. So this is a monomer. This has esters. It has various groups. Ester groups. So this monomer has a ester group in which the phosphate, the phosphate ion, is knocked out or replaced with chlorine. So this is this is what means chloro substituted phosphate esters, and uh, uh, this whole molecule is a monomer. Okay, so this is what second generation is all about. And uh, one more thing is that in first and second generation, there is no distinction as such, no distinction as such in between uh, that condition conditioning agent or primer or which one is bonding agent 
because this is the sole component. We are not taking three different uh, sub substances uh, and packing them in a bottle together or alternatively we are not even taking three different uh, chemicals uh, packed up in three different bottles. It is just these things individually in the same bottle. So there is no such demarcation clear cut that which of these conditions with of which of it times and which one is for bottle. So second and first and second generation you have to remember that there is no clear uh, demarcation or you can say distinction between conditioning, priming and bonding. Third generation. Third generation have the this is the first actually generation of dentin bonding agent that has all the three three step procedure that is we all know as conditioning and priming and bonding. So how do we remember this? It is so simple. Three and this is for three. So we know in the third generation there was the first concept that began with conditioning, priming and bonding. So this is it. In case of fourth generation, how do we remember it? Uh, first we will have to uh, uh, remember that it is the uh, this uh, is a generation of dentin bonding agent that relies on hybridization concept. Hybridization is nothing but that uh, uh, hybrid layer formed uh, while we are bonding that is between collagen and that uh, primer. The collagen and primer bound together is the hybrid layer that forms. So this is the uh, first. Uh, this is uh, this relies on the hybrid layer formation. So. Or let me show it here. How to remember it is you can do it by hybrid. The why I have made it like four. So four. This will remind you of that uh, fourth generation. That is hybrid. Fourth generation relies on hybrid technique or hybridization of the, that layer. So uh, in fourth generation, what happens is that in this case we had three bottles for all these steps, but in, in this case in fourth, what we do is one and two are mixed up, and three remains there. One plus two in same bottle. In the same bottle, and this is the second bottle. So one plus one plus two together, and then there is three. And there are two bottles. Bottle number one, bottle number two. So how to remember it? That uh, obviously there uh, this uh, pattern started for three bottles, three steps. So one two are added in the second. This will get reduce, reducing actually. So first and two, first one and two are mixed up together to form one bottle, and third uh, constituent that that is bonding agent is in different bottles. What happens in fifth generation? Is that simply? In that case, one and two were combined. In this case, but in this case, one remains alone, and two and three are combined instead of that. So this is how you can remember. I'll, I'll uh, make it more uh, compact at the end. We'll I'll just tell you the points on how to mem memorize again, just to see what are the things that are coming up with this. So sixth generation, as I've previously told you, that has one bottle mm, a solution or one step procedure. So it has all the one, two, and three in a same bottle. This makes a big bottle, large bottle, mm -hmm. all these are together finished. Which, and finally, the seventh generation, you'll just have to remember that it has fluoride releasing agents. So this is the fluoride releasing dentin bonding agent. So com coming up with again, uh, let's just recall what we used in first generation is GPA or glycerophosphoric uh, acid, and dimethyltryptate obviously remains there. Second generation is all about chloro substituted. Uh, phosphate esters of all those uh, resins or you can say monomers. Third generation is all about these three reminds us about three step procedure. So three steps are there since since there will be three bottles. One, two, three, three bottles on it. And in case of fourth, this will again come down. This was one bottle, no such uh, demarcation between constituents. Second bottle, second generation, again one bottle. Third generation, three bottle. Fourth generation, it will again contain two bottles. That is one and two combined, and three is again alone. Fifth generation, instead of one and two, two and three are uh, hold together in a single bottle and one is kept alone. In case of six, all these three are combined, combined, so it makes one bottle solution. And in case of a hybrid concept, you'll have to remember four. Hybrid has a four, so four generation is relied, relied on hybrid uh, formation. And seventh is fluoride relation. We'll continue this denting bonding in our next lecture. Uh, we'll discuss whatever is left. So just be there. Thank you for watching.